Praise the Lord. Good night, or is it good evening, or good morning, good afternoon, whatever time zone that you're watching. We welcome you into this service tonight. The hand of God has been great. He has enabled us to come today, even at this winding, or the winding of the 20 days of prayer. I come in the volume of the book and I decree and declare to each and every one and every man under the sound of my voice that gave themselves wholly and fully unto the things of the Spirit. Now this season will be, that the next season you are stepping in, the blessing of the Lord will go before you and that the hand of God will make sure that you have a reward that is tangible. The manifested presence of the Lord will go with you for a few minutes and then we pray. I'd like us to get uh, to the book of Jude chapter one, or you would say Jude verse three rather, because it's one verse. Beloved, when I gave all diligence, reading from verse three. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Mm. Contend for the faith that was once delivered. Contending for faith. Contending for the faith. Contending for the faith. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, baptize us with the spirit of prayer and intercession, but more so, that men and women will get into the place, O oh God, where territories will hear them. Territories will bow in the name of Jesus. See, the scripture declared, and, and Jude, the Bible says, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful also for me to write unto you and to exhort ye that ye should honestly contend for the faith. The reason why that is so is because it says then there are certain men that have crept unawares who are before of old ordained to this condemnation and godly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ so then he says therefore I will put you in remembrance that the threats that are coming into the faith put you into remembrance that you once knew this how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt after what destroyed them that believed not and the angels that did not keep their first estate but left their habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains and a darkness unto the judgment of that great day. The threats regarding the faith and what it is that will come and contend with your belief system, could, there could be a high and a very strong possibility that it is within the faith. And that the things that are coming to besmirch the name of our Lord Jesus are strongly inside the community of the saints or the community of the Christian. The people that are contending against tithing, the space that wants to contend, or the thing and the spirit that is contending against obedience and alignment and conformity to the will of God and to, to the discipline of giving ourselves either to prayer and fasting. The thing that are contending with the fundamental of Christian belief system are within the Christian faith. They're not outside. The world will care less regarding how you fast and who it is that you're praying to because they have their own system and they have their own God already. It is in the Christian faith that you find contentious issues and the ones that are contending regarding obedience, fasting, tithing, seeding, all 
stuff that uh, people have put on their wall or a preacher has spoken against or this and that that you've seen in social media it's not that they are not they're outside they're not worldly people these are not sinners these are men in the faith and so Paul I mean Jude begins to talk and he begins to teach and he says then Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, when I was mentoring you, when I was teaching, and I was putting forth across the marrow, the, the heartbeat of this kingdom, even regarding our salvation, it has become now needful for me to begin to put in you into remembrance that there will be men inside the kingdom of God and that there will be a, a cluster and a people that will arise right inside uh, in the great days of falling away when men begin to uh, question what it is that they have believed for 30 years, 40 years, have walked with the Lord, have seen miracles, signs and wonders. And the book of Hebrews would say, those who have tested of the powers to come, he says, it is now needful for me to exhort, challenge, to begin to correct certain things and to begin to build you in your most holy faith that you should honestly contend for the faith. Hmm. Contend for the faith which was once delivered. And he says this is how it was delivered. It was delivered unto the saints. It was delivered unto the saints for the faith which was once delivered. In other words, it's a baton. What it is that you believe now and what it is that you're learning from me is a baton that has been handed over. He says, protect that place from whence the source of your faith and the source of your belief and the source of where you're, you've anchored all of your spiritual experience. He says, protect that source and begin to contend because there is a facility and an insidious plan and a demonic will that will come and begin to contend that position. It will look for that position. It will force its way to that point so that you begin to come into the place of questioning what it is that you've been believing. Contend for the faith. That was once delivered contend for the faith that was once delivered contend for the faith that was once delivered because certain men will creep in unawares and they will creep in unawares to the extent that men will begin to fall away and that the weakness and that the enemy is inside zion is not outside but the enemy is right inside zion contend he begins to give an example and he says we need to put into remembrance that the people that came out of Egypt were God's people it was his promise and his and 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 he kept his word by bringing them into the land and by the time they are getting there the scripture declared the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward afterward destroyed them that believed not he said that in psalm 106 they limited the holy one of israel contending for the faith could it be i'm talking to some people here that have experienced you begin to question does jesus really exist that it could be a figment of an imagination of a very astute preacher could it be that he is a story could it be that he's a utopic personality that exists only in utopian world could it be that there is nothing really like heaven there is no nothing really like hell when you begin to get into those kind of thoughts or influence that has come to you to precipitate those kind of thoughts then you're already dealing with what now Jude begins to say that there will be people 
that certain men have crept unawares into their life and begun to turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though you knew once this before, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward he destroyed them that believed not. So contending for the faith uh, has implications regarding what it is that is your value system in this kingdom, what it is that you believe. What is it that you really believe? What is it that you believe? Could it be that it was handed over down to you and you've never had an experience with a master? You do not know him. You don't know his name. You don't know what it can, he can be, he has done. You don't have any testimonies whatsoever. And that you've grown up in a Christian home and become religious. And you've never had an encounter. And so defending the faith is hard for you because you have, literally, probably have none. Because in this kingdom we function by experience. It is what it is that you've tapped into in terms of you've trapped God into time. You've walked with him even unto Mount Horeb. You've walked with him like Abraham until he's known you like Moses face to face. That experience is where your faith is hinged. He says, contend then therefore for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, men and women of God that laid down their lives, that laid down their life for the gospel. Men that walked with God. Men that uh, uh, did exploits and turned their world upside down. Men he didn't say contend for the faith that was once delivered to angels. No. Faith that was once delivered unto the saints. What is it that you believe in? Who is it that you've believed? Paul declared unto Timothy, I am persuaded, I know, I know whom I have believed, and that he is able to keep keep me and to keep that which has have committed unto him until the day of his appearing until that last day do you have the confidence of the things that you profess to be as a believer can you be swayed by the vagaries and the vicissitudes of life and the kind of stuff? And you see there are many believers, people who love God and fear God, yes, and people who, but they have never had an experience and an encounter in the person of the Christ. They do not know him. They know about him. Job said, I used to, I used to hear about you, but now I know you. I have known the Paul declared it this way that I may know him in the fellowship of the sufferings and in the power of his resurrection I might know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering do you know him or you've heard about him being preached you've come accustomed to scriptures you've had this Matthew you've had John there you've had the mark mark there and you are you are, you are a caricature and a, and a compendium if you may of things that were just taught to you by way of teaching you've not had an experience you can't contend for the faith sir if you do not know him if you have no experience with him if you don't tarry it with him so that he can be able to grace you and be able to embed himself in you and you become a personality that looks like him because in the twinkling of an eye the scripture declared we shall be changed and we will look like him hmm. the faith that was once delivered says when the people were delivered out of Egypt he delivered them out and led them out of the land of Egypt to the land of the promise, but that he destroyed them, an entire generation, halfway. Why? Because they did not know the Lord. They did not know the Lord. 
they did not believe him. They wanted miracles. They chased after Moses and put him under pressure to an extent that he did his pokes and he spoke unadvisedly with his lips and struck the rock when he was supposed to speak to the rock. A people that had not been forged and galvanized in the things of the faith, in the things of God, they do not know him. Faith is grown, sir. You grow your faith. Yes, the Bible declared and Christ learned patient, Jesus learned patient, the Son of Man, the Son of God learned patient by the things he suffered, by the things he suffered. Do you know God can heal? Have you experienced healing? Do you know God can deliver? Have you experienced deliverance? Do you know God can prosper? Are you walking in prosperity? Do you know that God can provide? Has he provided? Do you have evidence? Because the contention regarding the faith is that there are men that will come with evidence and you have none. And they will begin to sway your belief system. Mm. He said, test and see that the Lord is good. What have you tested of him? That you can be able to distribute to men and women that are looking up to you. In that your house, in that your family. Have you tested and got to know that Jesus is Lord? Do you have the Holy Spirit to begin to teach you and to remind you of the things that he has spoken before? Can, how can you contend? for the faith and you do not know the word. How are you going to contend for your conviction and the word of God does not richly dwell in the inside of you? How are you going to contend for the faith and to the value system of this kingdom and defend it adequately when you have no encounter with him? I came all the way tonight to bring us to the place where we can be able not just quote scriptures, but we can contend with the contender that will come. The Bible declared in the book of Daniel, they said Belshazzar, I mean Nebuchadnezzar, or oh, don't bother yourself regarding this matter. As touching our God, we care less to answer you on this matter. If it be God, if he is God, he will. He will deliver. Even if he does not deliver us, so shall it be. That is contending contending for the faith. Men that have been wired so strongly, their convictions are intact, their value system, if there is any vacillation in any given faith, is in the Christian faith. There is a lot of vacillated believers. Today they believe healing, tomorrow a challenge comes, they cannot believe. They are, they are in unbelief. They can't even pray for God to help their unbelief. They can be swayed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. And then they cannot ever have the power and the wherewithal to stand against the wiles <coughs> of the enemy. Excuse me. Contending for the faith. How will you defend? How will you defend your faith? How can you defend your faith? When the anchor is the word of God and you don't have it in your house, you don't have it in your life, it is not showing anywhere. How are you going to contend for the faith? Because life is dishing out all manner of warfare, pressure, school, children, business, entrepreneurship, employment, application, all that. You're trying to find expression in the earth. How are you going to contend for the faith? And we are converging towards the end of seasons right now. We are converging towards end. The end of the worlds are upon us. How are you going to contend for the faith? How are you going to contend for the faith? I brought that charge out so that we can be able to know that it is inside the kingdom of God that the enemy has succeeded in making enemies within. You need some fire and a dimension because the devil was in the kingdom of God. He was in the God, in God's presence. 
He came with the fire of the angels. And the Bible declared, they that did not keep their first estate, they were in the presence of God. And as I told you earlier uh, this morning, you can plateau. You can plateau. You alone deserve my worship, so we we'll lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh, so we we'll lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh. So we lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh. Mm. So we lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh. Open up your mouth and begin to talk to God. He said, Have him there eyes of their understanding darkened so that they don't come to the knowledge of their salvation how are you going to navigate blind tell the lord remove the scales and the lid off of mine eyes that i will not be legalistic sanctimonious and no foundation whatsoever of the word of God and of the tenets of the faith as uh, according to the word of God. That God will find an apologist that is full of the word of God and has integrity. That will God will find an apologist of the faith in this generation. Men that are ready to die for the faith. Contending. Contending, contending. Contending for the faith. Malo ke se prento la marada, vazuze ke preskupa gas ke ne menama, alike tos ke pregazufa man karira bara, ele berus ke petes ke vina kanto la ke mekina, ampakas kupa katos ke fregede dia kaita, ele bente kina kala bara zuza. Hey, in the hall of fame, Hebrews 11, in the list of men of fame in Hebrews 11. These were men that turned the world upside down. The Bible declared, ha, we have no space to speak of Barak, and we have no speak, speak, uh, space to speak of men that subdued kingdoms, um, of Japhthai and Samson, uh, and of Samuel and of the prophets, um, who through faith subdued kingdoms, um, wrought righteousness and obtained promises, um, stopped the mouth of lions, uh, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. These are men uh, that the world was not worthy of. They came after the order of Enoch, came after the, the order of Elijah. Men that were galvanized in God, traveled in God so much that they were picked up because the art was not worthy of them. Women received their dead back to life. How are you going to confront a man full of results from the kingdom of God that he, uh, he applied himself to? And you, you are coming with an experience, rather a theory, and you are at the mercy of a man that has walked with God and journeyed in God and journeyed with God so much so that the Bible declared the world was not even worthy of. Contending for the faith. There has to be evidence that you've been in the secret chamber of God until you look like him. There's to be an evidence that you've romanced God so much so that he has released a fragrance on you. Otherwise, we'll be stuck up with theories and stuck up with experiences that we can never be able to defend. And mockery will be right, left, center with your neighbor because you've believed a lie all throughout. You've never encountered him. You do not know him personally. You've never, you've always heard about him. But you can never be able to, when it comes to the place of contention, when there is contention regarding is there resurrection, you can't even tell. You don't even know the scriptures that deal with resurrection. 
TikTok to begin to teach you and begin to convince you regarding purgatory. You don't even know what the scripture declares regarding the white uh, judgment and the seat of Christ. That Jesus was a figment of imagination. He was a good prophet. He's not a son of God. And you can't defend the faith that you've believed in. You have no value system whatsoever that you can be able to defend using your experience and the knowledge that has been imparted on you and for you all these years. Said, so I have left you there, Titus, to begin to put in order the things that remain. The things that remain. So we lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh. Karose patale. Amikun taki na baruse. If you've picked up and at a at a random church service and at a random congregation and begin to talk to people and ask them by questionnaire what it is that they believe in. They cannot be able to tell you the Apostles' Creed. They cannot be able to tell you they believe in the resurrection because of this and that. They cannot be able to tell you that Jesus came in the flesh and he was born of Mary and that he died and rose up again in three days. And if he is convinced that he never rose up, they cannot be able to fend, they defend the apex of the Christian faith. Open up your mouth. It's a call and a quest for hunger to study the word of God, to be taught and to be learned in all the wisdom of this kingdom. In all, just like Moses in the book of Acts chapter 7. Ah, he was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt. Open up your mouth and talk to God. Lako semena. What is it that you know? You'd rather quote the scriptures wrong than never quote them at all. What is it, sir, that you know? What is it that you know of this faith? We are getting into the last of days when men will have to come and defend like Paul before King Agrippa and defend the faith until you're told you are beside yourself, Paul. Too much learning regarding this matter of the kingdom has made your mind to go nuts. He said, I am not beside myself. Even you, King Agrippa and Felix, you know, o King, that this thing was not done in a corner. His crucifixion was not done in a corner. His resurrection was not done in a private. He resurrected from the dead and all and sundry know, I ain't beside myself. Can you defend the faith that was once delivered? How much scriptures do you have in the spirit, in you? What if the Bibles were burnt and there is no internet and you can't access a download? What is it that you know from scripture that will defend the course of your life or will mark the course of the next of your life? If Jesus tarries, contending for the faith is also posture, is also culture. It is also the discipline that you get to know that my God, I need to study my word. I'm lacking in this and in that, in that area. I need to pray and to be in priesthood. What is it that you know? Otherwise, the people that will come in the Christian dome and have already come, false Christ, antichrist with the spirit, the Jezebelic spirit, manipulative and controlling and threatening, even with an antichrist spirit. They will sift you if you don't have anything in your spirit, not in your mind, in your spirit, that God can work out salvation with your life. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, bring us to that place of understanding. Mm. Mm. Bring us to that place of understanding. That the gospel is expensive. Someone paid for it. It is not free. And that what it is that you left in the mark and in the sand of time with the apostles. And that was supposed to be handed as a baton unto us. We might have received a false gospel. We might have been deceived somehow from the many experiences we've had throughout the journey of life. 
We ask for the spirit of clarity and the Holy Ghost. We ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will do as good as unto Zion. Bring us to the place, O oh God, of a balanced diet in the spirit and put us into hunger for the things of God. Hunger for the faith that was one to contend for that which is contending with our belief system from new age uh, oh yes from weak and altars uh, from all manner of intellectual prowess uh, from new age teachings that have penetrated the church and penetrated to the sense of God we ask in the name of Jesus we will contend for the faith we will contend for the faith we will contend for the faith in the name of Jesus we bless your name Father we give you praise and now to the benediction to most and to each and every one of you that fasted together with us interdenominationally. We decree and declare in the name of the Lord that that as you've been faithful all throughout these 20 days to come before the presence of the Lord, I release by prophecy and I release by the office that God has granted unto me by grace. Let anything that wanted to bury you die. Let it be buried in your stead. Any pit that they dug for you hitherto, before now, that pit they will fall in it themselves. Whatever trap, whatever kind of an arrow that has been shot from the underworld to come after you, we speak in the name of the Lord. May the faithfulness of God answer your enemies at the gate. Every tongue, every speech, every word that has been spoken over your life, hitherto that has found expression in poverty, in lack, in confusion, in mediocrity, we bury and we nullify every word that has been spoken and it is not God that said it. Who is he that speaketh? And the Lord commanded him not. I stretch my hands unto you and I decree and declare fresh fire upon thy altar. Fresh that what you've contacted in this ministry and even in this mountain that grace dwells with you. You'll be a man and a woman of fire for the things of God. We decree and declare that which you've shown you by many nights and many days. Uh, that which you've contacted by the grace of God in the heavenlies. Let it be permanent in your life. And therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak. Let there be an infilling and an inferno of the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit out working miracles in your life. You will encounter destiny helpers. You will encounter men and women that have dreams about you. They'll be given a name. They'll be given their address. Miracles will explode in your life. You don't come to Zion to seek him in vain. He didn't call Jacob to seek him in vain. I speak in the name of Jesus to every man and woman under the sound of my voice. Enter into rest. Whatsoever that has been contending your rest, contending your faith, contending your belief system, we bury it in this mountain. We decree and declare, enter into rest. May you experience your Sabbath. Enter into your Sabbath. There remains one rest for God's people, the scripture declared. You have entered into it. You have entered into him. You have entered into him. I speak in the name of the Lord. Let the fire upon your altar never go down. The fire for prayer, intercession, fasting, intermittent fasting, frequent fasting on the face of God. I decree and declare that you'll not just be a prayer warrior and have nothing to show for. That disorder is corrected. I speak in the name of the Lord. I decree and declare, may the hand of God be upon you. Ah, may your bread and your water, may your finance be released. The coffers that have held and choked your finance and your financial life, I break that chokehold. I break that chokehold. I break that chokehold. I break that chokehold. And I decree and declare, you will serve the Lord in gladness. May business open and recover. May business recover. May your business recover. May you enter into the place of a dimension of the kingdom sovereign wealth that will be bequeathed upon you because you become a steward. We decree and declare every coldness, every weight that has perforated through your spiritual man, that you've become legalistic, and you've become a man not of faith. You've stayed strayed into unbelief. I speak in the name of Jesus. We correct that kind of an attack. And any attack on your prayer life is a real attack. Any attack on your word life is a real attack. And I speak in the name of Jesus. 
May the hand of God be upon you. May the hand of God be upon you. May the hand of God be upon you, you and your children, you and your water. Let there be a fresh fire uh, to undergird thee when you go out and you're coming in. May the angel of his presence be upon you. May the angel of God be upon you. Psalm 91 becomes your portion in the name of Jesus. May you experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. May the hand of God make known unto you the mysteries. Make known unto thee the mysteries. Make known unto thee the mysteries. Make known unto thee the mysteries of the kingdom. And at the hand of God be perpetually be on your enemies. He will give you thy enemies, the neck of thy enemies, and decree and declare. He will give you strength to battle, and your fingers ready for war. You will obtain the obtainables. We decree and declare that the territory will yield to every man and woman under the sound of my voice that will begin to call upon the name of the Lord constantly, and that your family will enter into rest. Your business will enter into rest in the name of Jesus. It shall not be in vain to seek the Lord. It will not be in vain to seek the Lord. Ah, those who seek him early shall find him, the scripture declared. He said in the book of Proverbs, uh, yes, yeah, silver and gold is his, and that he is seeking men that will be rewarded for seeking his face. They are rewarded not by silver and gold. It's a byproduct. Silver and gold becomes a byproduct. It becomes a benefit. We don't seek him for things. We seek him because of who he is. We seek him because we want to know him. We want to be deep in God. The offshoot and the wellspring and the, the benefit will come as it is accrued upon our account. He called his own that they may be with him first. I speak to each and every one of you and under the sound of my voice, everything that has followed you hitherto in these 20 days is buried here. You go scot-free. I call out your freedom and I decree and declare anything embedded on your body, embedded on your skin, embedded on your certificates, embedded on your children. That is not God that planted it. We cut it off by the handiwork of God. We cut it off by the sword of the Spirit. Walk scot-free. May your eyes open. May your ears pop open. Any kind of infection, any kind of virus, any kind of attack, any kind of sickness on your body, we are rested in this mountain and we decree and declare freedom has been released to you. Freedom has been released to you. We call you blessed. We call you sanctified. We call you righteous. We call you qualified. We call you, oh, the favored of God. You become Beulah and Hephzibah. Beulah and Hephzibah. You become the ox of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, we thank each and every one of you that have come around and come along these 20 days. It's been tough. For some of you, it's brand new, something new you are doing. Or is something, fasting has become almost like something new. Well, to some of us, it's become a lifestyle. And to some of you too. And so we honor God for each and every one of you that have come up to Mount Zion all these 20 days to stay up in the presence of the Lord. We ask that the, the God that is rich unto all will make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto you. And he will show you mercy at night in the evening, at afternoon in the morning, at the midnight hour. He will show you mercy. He will grant thy petitions. And that the thing that have been hanging around you hitherto, they leave you instantly. And you go on in the presence of God with a testimony in thy hand. You will put a new song in thy mouth. And the enemy will see that song. So shall it be. Jesus mighty name. We love you to life. I together and the first lady invite you now even to Exodus Sunday this uh, 24 hours after this video has uh, you have uh, uh, watched this service and you've, some of you you've watched this video. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that that Sunday and that tomorrow about this time you will experience the hand of God, the power of God even as we come into the uh, uh, by the hand of God and by the gift of God and the anointing that he has given unto us for infallible proofs 
and a marvelous light service tomorrow about this time. At the hand of God, you will not miss him. You will not miss it. So we invite you, come along, invite and share. Do all the sharing you can. Let us come and celebrate God as yokes will get broken. Healings will occur. Bring someone that has not encountered the prophetic. Bring someone that has not encountered the prophet. Bring someone that has not encountered Jesus. We will meet you there and he will meet us there. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Been your host, Prophet John Haggai, saying, if it is not God we serve, then we serve nothing at all. I bless your water. I bless your, uh, your bread and your water. Let there be provision in your house. You will never lack any day of your life. So shall it be. Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Until we see you again Sunday, tomorrow, about this time. We love you to life. Amen.